In this video, you are going to learn how to strengthen your feet and ankles simultaneously. So let's get straight into it. For our first exercise, we are gonna get into a wall inversion. To start with, you are gonna to wanna to get up onto your hands with your ankles above your head, and we, I'm just kidding, we are not gonna be doing a handstand, but we are gonna be getting close to the wall. So what you are actually gonna do is come up to the wall with your hands on it, and this is more or less just going to be here as a base of support for you. And what we're gonna get used to here is taking the ankle joint through its entire range of motion actively. And really all this means is we're gonna to try to get the ankle joint working actively, both through a dorsiflexion, which is really just the toes coming up to the shin bone, as well as a plantar flexion, which is the toes pressing away from my shin bone. So as you can see here, all I'm doing is sitting down into about a half squat position, and I'm just going to gently start to roll some weight distribution to my heels. Once I'm in that end phase of the half squat position and I have some weight on my heels, I'm going to slowly begin to stand up and just begin to feel kind of a gentle roll to my midfoot and then eventually my toe where I'm gonna finish in that plantar flexion or really just coming up onto my toes. What I like to combine this with is when I am coming up and I'm finishing on my toes, you can see here that I'm kind of turning my ankles out slightly and this is just favoring a little bit of a supination of the ankle, which is just going to add a little bit more dynamic and mobile range to the joint itself. Once you kind of get the gist of the coordination and the tension that is involved through the feet, as well as through the ankle, what you can start to do here is increase the range of motion a little bit as we start to work through this both ways. So what I'm starting to do here is increase the depth of my squat, which is going to challenge the muscles around my ankle a little bit more, the more that I drop down into the squat. And then I'm gonna to start to take that tension and then just begin to follow it through as I come up through a little bit of hip extension alongside the plantar flexion of the ankle. So what's great about this is we are not only working on our feet and our ankle, but we are also starting to work on the links upstream between the knee, the hip, and even up into the rib cage here as well. In terms of rep ranges, what I would recommend is anywhere between 10 to 15 repetitions is good. If you find that the ankle and the smaller muscles around it are starting to fatigue, then there's no issue at staying at a lower rep range as well. I would say anywhere between five to eight reps is even a good place to be at. For our second exercise, we're gonna be working through a single leg swing. If you have difficulty balancing on one leg, then what I would suggest for this exercise is grabbing a chair or a pole or a broomstick, something really that you can just support yourself with. Now what we're gonna start with is one leg off the ground and it's just gonna be behind us in hip extension. And what we're gonna try to bring some awareness or attention to is gonna be our planted leg. So first and foremost, I'm gonna think about creating a little bit of a shin angle on my standing leg, just where my knee is kind of slightly on top of my ankle. And we are gonna start with most of our weight on the heel here. This is going to evolve, but we are going to simply start with the weight on the heel. So what I want you to get used to is having two points of tension on your feet while you're in this position. So you're gonna have a little bit of weight on your heel as well as on the outer edge of your foot. Now what you're going to start to do is maintain those two points of tension in that planted foot and you're gonna to start to take that leg that is off the ground slightly forward. So as the leg that is off the ground comes into that phase of hip flexion, what we're gonna focus on is shifting some of the ground tension from the heel slightly towards the toe. So what we are starting to do here is dynamically create stability through the foot and the ankle, but we're also gonna be doing so around a active ground tension where we're shifting from one point of the foot to the other. And what's good about this is we are not only strengthening the ankle joint and the foot itself, but we're also replicating kind of the, the shift of weight that we would kind of naturally go through through any type of walking pattern or if we were to even pick something up. Our center of gravity is constantly shifting around. 
So getting used to kind of this weight shift pattern around the foot and the ankle is gonna be imperative if we want to increase the strength but also the relative mobility. Your primary focus here is going to be keeping that ankle and the foot under just a small and consistent tension and more or less just try to maintain that as you're taking the leg that is off the ground through that hip flexion and hip extension motion. If you want to challenge yourself a little bit more fully, then you can remove the pole, the chair, the broomstick, whatever it might be, and try to do this just simply with balancing on that single leg. What I would recommend here is working through about 12 to 15 repetitions on either side and go through it for a total of two sets. For our third and final exercise, we are gonna go through ankle rocking. So this is going to build on our previous exercise where we're going through the wall inversion in the sense that we're just gonna to try to take the ankle through this kind of dynamic range of motion of dorsiflexion and plantar flexion a little bit more quickly. So the beginner version of this is to simply just come into a standing position and just get used to kind of shifting weight from your heel to your toe. And you can see my toes are actually gonna lift here. And then as I rock forward, my heel is going to lift. And all I'm doing here is just getting used to kind of this rocking motion, getting that weight transfer to go again from the heel to the toe. And I'm just trying to maintain kind of a subtle rhythm of my feet here as I'm just rocking back and forth. Now for the intermediate version, we're gonna to start to build on this a little bit, just where we start to integrate a little bit more of the entire body. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna rock back, my foot will lift, and then as I come forward, my entire body is gonna come into the phase of extension. So this is very similar to the wall inversion exercise we were doing, except now there is no wall. So now when I get to that top position, what you're gonna to wanna to start to think about is dropping the heel down quickly, so the hips and the muscles around the hips, such as the hamstrings and glutes, can kinda of start to catch the momentum. And then I'm just gonna carry that momentum through as I come back into extension. The last and final variation to this, which is the advanced variation, would be us starting to incorporate a jump. So as you can see, the basics of this remain the same. I'm still rocking from my heel to my toe, but once I get to that end position of my toe, I'm going to physically take a jump up as high as I can, and then I'm just going to catch and kind of cushion that momentum back down I'll reload back into my heel, and then I rock right back into my jump. So now we are not only strengthening the ankle and the foot, but we're also starting to apply this to a relative motion. And this motion where we go through the jump would be a similar sort of strength mechanic that we would find ourselves doing commonly throughout the course of a day. You have to remember that as you're going through these exercises, that the ankle is a very dynamic joint, and it doesn't only work kind of in this passive way. We want to start to think about how it starts to relate to momentum and how that momentum actually translates into motion. So working a jump here is a great way for our entire body to start to connect to this motion so the ankle and foot understands kind of this momentum concept. Now by all means, if you are rehabbing a ankle injury or if you have dealt with severe sprains or fractures around there, then I probably wouldn't suggest going into the more advanced variation just yet but I just wanted to give you insight into ideally what type of exercises you eventually would want to progress towards. In terms of repetitions for this exercise, for the beginner and intermediate variation, I'd probably work anywhere between 15 to 20 repetitions. And for the more advanced one, anywhere between eight to 12 would be great. The last thing that I wanted to touch on in terms of increasing the strength of your ankle and your feet is to think about looking into buying a minimalist shoe. Now really all a minimalist shoe is, is one that has a very low profile in terms of how thick the sole is, as well as one that typically has a pretty wide toe box. Just by simply walking in shoes like this, you are going to be actively strengthening your feet. Because you have to think any time that I am standing on two feet and I'm performing any type of motion, where is stability going to be created in my body? Well, it's really gonna be created all over, but it's certainly going to be created through the feet and the ankles, as that is going to be kind of our place or base of support that is going to route us through 
almost every motion that we'd find ourselves doing. Now, before jumping on the minimalist shoe train, something that I would suggest is making sure that your ankles and feet are in a good place to actually take on that level of stimuli. And then secondly, when you actually start to utilize them, do it in a slow way. Just kind of slowly start to introduce them into your day-to-day -day routine. If you do it all at once where you are training in a min minimalist shoe, <laughs> minimalist, and then you are walking outside and doing everything in one and your structure isn't used to that, what you might notice is your feet start to cramp, you might get a little bit of joint pain here and there, and that's just because your feet and ankles aren't used to stabilizing in that way, especially for that period of time. So slowly introduce them to your lifestyle, maybe go for a walk in them, and then a couple weeks, you can start to wear them for a half day, then you can start to train in them and wear them for a half day, and then you can just start to go through kind of a slow progressive model that way. Anyways, that is everything I got in terms of strengthening your ankles and feet for today. I hope you found some value in it, and if you did, something that would help me out a lot is if you did throw it a like, as well as subscribe to the channel for more content similar to this. Until next time, make sure you are prioritizing, and then you are optimizing for you. I will catch you in the next one. Peace.